My, my understanding of neurodiversity in education, I always say it's, it's, it means different things to different people, you know, based on their kind of unique set of experiences. So I wouldn't ever want to position myself as the font of what that means in an educational sense, recognising that lots of different people will engage and experience neurodiversity in different ways. But for the purpose of the research I do, I kind of define it, broadly speaking, as a set of intersecting factors around disability. So most namely and most commonly, this is around kind of ADHD, dyspraxia, dyslexia and autism. And that isn't exclusive just those things, there are other aspects as well. But for the purpose of my research, I've always kind of located it in those areas and looking kind of for the in-between factors. But I do stress it's really important that people experience neurodiversity in, in different ways and so I always kind of, what I want us to do is to kind of have a really fluid, broad definition of this because actually what we're beginning to really come out of is this kind of restrictive binary definition of neurodiversity which is I think has even changed over the last five years, never mind the last decade. So I think for me it's always this feeling of, it's an evolving concept um, as the needs of kind of pupils and learners change, it's going to continue to evolve. So I think that's something that we should always hold at the forefront of our mind. Part of my thinking around um, neurodiversity, particularly in terms of research, is where we were, where we are now and where we're looking to go. And a huge part of my research focuses on how we bring all of these kind of moving intersecting elements together to provide better outcomes for neurodivergent people. So one of the ways in which I've done this, I've been fortunate to kind of engage in research that is informed policy for Welsh, Scottish and um, English parliaments. And I guess one of the things that's kind of really important for me is really finding ways to make the education curriculum um, or the national curriculum as we know it more inclusive. And I guess part of that is really interrogating what are some of the things that exclude people from the current curriculum in its current guise. And I guess some of that relation, um, or it kind of arcs back to my own experiences as a, as a child who was obviously part of the national curriculum in some way and um, going to school and feeling, I guess, ostracised in some ways. And I couldn't really make sense of that experience because a lot of the mechanisms or pedagogical mechanisms that were used to engage um, learners at that time was a kind of one glove fits all model. And I've always kind of really strongly been against that. And it's one of the things that motivated me to become a teacher in the first place. And it's also one of the things that motivated me to become an academic and engaging in a practice element of this work, which kind of presents the theories around this and the kind of, and the data and then the practice element in terms of how to work with um, educational stakeholders and parliamentarians to ensure that we kind of really create as an inclusive a space as possible for neurodivergent individuals, but not just neurodivergent individuals, all pupils and um, stakeholders within the education system. So my present research focuses on a project that I'm working with my colleague and best friend, Dr. Chantal Lewis, who is at the University of Oxford. And our book really focuses on how we bring love, compassion and empathy into learning spaces, but particularly for neurodivergent children. And I think one thing that's really important to kind of illustrate is that Chantal herself um, identifies as neurodivergent as someone that has ADHD, dyslexia and dyspraxia. So both of our experiences and my experience as an autistic person kind of really amalgamate to kind of make some sense of not only our own experiences in the education system as neurodivergent people, but people who presently reside in the um, education system and what their experiences have been like and how we can use um, I guess political levers, educational levers um, and beyond to really think about how we change the learning space for neurodivergent people, not just within the education system, but society more broadly. One of the things that would surprise people um, that they might not be aware of is actually the amount of interventions Cambridge has in place to support neurodivergent learners. And I think that has been, I've been here just over a year and that's been one of the things that has hugely surprised me. There are so many interventions and so many actually inclusive ways in which adaptations are made for neurodivergent people. And what I would encourage all institutions to do, as well as Cambridge, is to continue to kind of build upon that success and support neurodivergent learners in these kind of really innovative, supportive ways, using the resource and democratising that as far and as wide as possible. And I think Cambridge has done that, at least for the year that I've been here anyway, exceptionally well from what I've observed. And I believe it was happening way before I arrived here anyway.